that Marmot had no chance. Oh, this Marmot's trying to avenge his fallen brethren. Yes! Well done, Marmot. He, <laughs> he took the Bengal Tiger down. Hello, everybody. Grace still plays, and we're back with more Taito Ecology. No time for BS. Our biome is looking a little barren here, so I'm going to put down some trees because our elephants are apparently not super happy about their current plot in life. If you notice, their hunger rating is almost at zero. So I imagine this elephant bloom right to the ground. There goes that elephant. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Still have a red panda hanging around and that's good because I need to unlock this bamboo real fast. I just wanted to do that so I can, holy cow. Look at the size of these, look at the size of these bamboo stalks. That's what I'm talking about. So one of the first things that I wanted to do is Michael, one of the viewers, wanted the Bengal Tiger to get unlocked. So we have to make sure that we do that. There it is. Unlock that straight away. We'll be putting him down in just a second. First things first though, we need to get enough little guys for the Bengal Tiger to actually feast on. And before we get any little guys, we need some grass because we do not really have any. So some of the things that I do want to do is, let's see here, we've got this bamboo now, honeysuckle, oak, what do I want to do? I want to get a couple more of these, we'll get some of these poppies just because they should look pretty cool, I don't know exactly what this is, but I like the sound of it, get this fairy grass as well, pretty cheap actually that fairy, gra that fairy grass, I'm kind of happy about that, let's see what the fairy grass looks like, okay, looks like tufts of grass. Let's take a real quick look here. Um, hmm, kind of wheat looking actually. Looks a little bit like uh, like little wheat tufts. Now the rhododendron is, okay, you're pretty standard tree. Wow, look at that. It gets real bright and fancy. How are butterflies doing? Butterflies are doing just fine. Excellent, I'm glad to see that. Blue poppies, let's go ahead and put a couple of those down as well. We haven't, get, we haven't gotten to see these guys yet. All right, they look pretty cool. They put out some nice blue coloring in our landscape. Actually, it looks very nice compared to this kind of reddish pink that the uh, rhododendron has. Moving back over here to the goji. We're going to want plenty of those because they have both fruit and leaves. And this time, we need to be sure that we have enough plants and such for everyone. Bunch of joint fur I want to get down to. I think that joint fur is really going to assist in keeping the herbivores happy. Oh look, it looks like the sun is coming out. This is pretty cool. What's it look like up here? Looking at the sky here. Very pretty. That almost, look at that glow. It's turning from red into this beautiful blue. That is neat. All right, so the sun has clearly fully come up. It is a glorious day in Taito Ecology, I'll tell you that. Now, I wonder if as I place these different plants, because I'm putting them on these snow peaks, if that will cause them to not grow as well. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen. How far can this butterfly reach? Not super far. Is this guy reaching everything else? Eh, just about. I could probably stand to put something else over here. I'm going to put down just a regular moth. We'll let him kind of get in right there. There we are. That looks good. As you notice, I have my speedy up thing going, so <laughs> you don't have to remind me. <laughs> Normally, I would have, of course, forgotten, but today it's doing quite well. All right, now we're actually getting to the point where I feel a little bit better about the amount of plants that we have down. Remember, the way that the herbivores currently eat, you want to get down a big amount of plants, and you want to get them down really fast. I actually want to read about... Oh, let's put down some more fairy grass, actually. More of this kind of weedy fairy grass. There we are. And now I want to read about this uh, rhododendron because I want to know exactly what this thing does. In the wild, most animals prefer not to snack on rhododendron leaves, but will consume its flowers. In your biome, however, animals will eat the leaves of your rhododendron. All right. Other uses. 
The wood is uh, used by humans for charcoal and timber. The rhododendron applied directly to the forehead. Okay. The leaves of the rhododendron are sometimes used to help relieve headaches. Ha! Huh. Has anyone tried that? I'd be really interested to know. This species of rhododendron is the largest of its kind. The largest recorded rhododendron grows in India and is over 20 meters tall. Holy cow. I did not expect that plant to get quite that high. All right, we're gonna need a couple of little guys here to put out so that our Bengal tigers will have something to eat. We'll put down a real quick pika. I'm not really sure what this is, but it sounds really cool. So let's go ahead and unlock it and put one of these down. It looks like a deer, sort of? I don't know, let's zoom in on these. Like long-faced deer. What kind of sound do you guys make? Don't make any sound. Let's read about this. This Chevrotain. Chevrotains only have one offspring at a time, but are able to mate again right after giving birth. Oh, lucky them. Most types of Chevrotain can live to be about 10 years in the wild. Chevrotains have been around for a long time. They haven't changed much in millions of years. Ooh, thank you for the title coins. And are similar to many extinct ancient species of deer. Okay, so it is a deer. Chevron, uh, Chevrotains are fungivores. Frugivores, not fungivores, frugivores. Meaning fruits are their preferred meal. They love to eat fruits that have fallen to the ground, but will consume leaves as well if fruits are scarce. Chevrotains fall prey to doles, leopards, and tigers, and other predators. They rely on dense vegetation to remain hidden from predators. Ooh. Since it is considered a tasty snack by so many types of animals, Chevrotains use their spots as camouflage and hide in tall vegetation. Besides being a food source for many animals, Chevrotains also are important seed dispersers for plants. Look at the big eyes on that creature. So strange. All right. Ooh, these joint furs are looking pretty furry. I like that. Looking excellent. All right, guys. Michael, this is for you. It's time to get down a Bengal tiger. Let's go ahead and put him over here. I imagine his roaming area is massive. Oh, yeah. There we go. And just like every big cat, the first thing the Bengal tiger does is fall asleep. How many do we get? Two, I'm guessing. Yep, two of them. Let's see what it has to say. Oh, did you hear that roar? Love it. Let's see what it has to say about the Bengal tigers diet. Bengal tigers are strict carnivores. They prey on many larger mammals and will even attack dangerous animals like bears. Tigers prefer to stalk and ambush their prey and then, then to chase it down. Their stripes help to camouflage them in tall grasses while they wait for the perfect time to strike. The Bengal tiger is an apex predator. Nothing preys directly on the Bengal tiger, but humans have poached them for their coats and for their body parts that are falsely believed to have medicinal purposes. Tiger's forelimbs are powerful and can be curved inward to hold onto large prey. The hind legs are also powerful and are longer than its forelegs, allowing them to leap up to 10 meters. Holy cow. All right. Well, we've got some Bengal tigers. Michael, I hope that that uh, makes you happy because now we need to get some good little guys here for them to hunt down. Chinese. What is this? What is this, guys? Let's put this down. It's an insectivore. I just don't really know what it is. Some sort of... Are these lizards or... Oh, look, they got little forelimbs up in the air. What is this? The pangolin's diet consists of ants and termites and it can... And its appearance of reflects that. Its nostrils and ears can be closed at will to prevent insects from biting. And its long claws allow it to rip apart ant hills and termite mounds. In your biome, pangolins will happily eat any type of insect, however. Ooh. Okay, the word pangolin is derived from a Malayan word, meaning the roller. <laughs> this refers to the pangolin's tendency to roll up into a ball when in danger. The roller. Ooh. That's actually a pretty uh, a pretty neat little nickname they've got there. Makes them... Make them... <laughs> Makes them sound a lot more tough, I guess, than they really are. We need to get these guys some insects, though, right away. Now, I know we've got some ants. I'm pretty sure there we go. Let's put all kinds of ants down. We want to at least get a couple 
of these ant hills. There we go. And in fact, what else do I have? Do I have any other insects? Oh, you know what? We haven't unlocked the stag beetle yet. That is an insect and it's a detritus reducer. So let's put some of these guys down over there and let's put some of these guys down over here as well. Stag beetles, what do you look like? Are they, oh, they're looming on like this piece of, is this like a piece of log? Yes, it is. Diet during the last phase of their lives, stag beetles are unable to eat solid food. They can drink liquid from fruit, tree sap, and other matter, but rely on fat reserves stored in their larval phase to survive. Stag beetle larvae are voracious eaters of rotten wood, but they are living, but leave living plants alone. They're great for gardens. Oh, that's cool. In ancient times, writers noted that it was fashionable to wear dead stag beetles as necklaces? What? What is the purpose? Why would you do such a thing? It's a fashion accessory. Poor stag beetle. It's like some sort of horrible Rambo movie, but instead of wearing the ears of your fallen, fallen opponents, they're wearing stag beetles. That is just straight up strange. What's happening over here? Are you guys getting taken out? Oh, your hunger's going down a little bit. Kind of wonder what's going on over there. Let's continue to put down some more creatures like this marmot. Actually, I think we'll put down a couple of marmots. There we go. Actually, we'll put down a host of marmots. Put down a marmot over here as well. And while we're at it, you know that we're going to need plenty more plants. Where can I fit this thing? Oh, one of the things that they changed, I almost forgot to tell you guys this, is now you can move your camera around while you're placing things and holy cow what a welcome change that is i am so happy to be able to do this another pomegranate i'm gonna put down one of these guys over here right next to the uh eagle uh, is it the hawk moss or the eagle moss green hawk moss i'm gonna have to learn all these creatures because a lot of these guys are new and exciting what are you doing there red panda you eating that fairy grass? Apparently you are. How's this bamboo doing? I imagine the reproduction time on bamboo, on pam, <laughs> bamboo, it's bamboo eaten by pandas on bamboo is pretty high. Not really. It doesn't say so. That's interesting. I do want to probably put down at least one more chunk of bamboo. Where can we find some more bamboo? Perhaps this way. There we are. Put another bunch of bamboo shoots right over here we go this bangle tiger is doing his laps getting some running in let's go follow him and see exactly where he's going i wonder if he's hunting someone or if he just wants to run through the wild poppies moving along pretty good trucking along there bangle tiger oh he's heading toward the marmots what does it all mean oh no that marmot had no chance. Oh, this marmot's trying to avenge his fallen brethren. Yes. Well done, marmot. He, <laughs> he took the Bengal tiger down. I think that that was just good timing on everyone's part. Needless to say, though, the Bengal tigers do like those marmots. So we always want to make sure that we have plenty of those. And these gojis should be a welcome fruit and leaf creator for many an animal moving back over here to the marmots i think i'd like to put at least one more down actually i'm gonna put one of these guys back down too there we are and while we're doing that do we have actually do we have bees in this version i'm pretty sure we do maybe maybe we don't have any bees huh all right doesn't look like it no bees one horned rhino what do you guys think should i unlock that next i'm gonna keep some of my title coins so if you want to see something new and exciting unlocked i will go ahead and do that for you let us place down some more ferns right about there and i'm hoping that our plants can actually get the opportunity to expand this time more poppies too just because like i said it really gives the area a nice glow a nice blue a nice blue tinge with these nice with these beautiful flowers that are on here and they are flowering apparently 
The blue poppy is nibbled by many types of herbivore. Though none rely on it as a sole food source, blue poppy is used in some medicines. The blue poppy is highly prized by gardeners, but is notoriously difficult to grow outside of its home range. Interesting. Reproduction. The blue poppies release dozens of seeds, so they spread quite e easily. They rely on pollinators to grow. The blue poppies in your biome will live for three years. Okay. Blue poppies are perennial, meaning that they grow back every year. Excellent. Ah, the sun's coming back up. I'm glad to see that. Since they grow so easily, let us put down a couple more poppies. No reason not to, especially on this little snow cap we've got going on here. And I think while we're at it, we'll put down some more joint furs as well. Right about there. And if I can, I think I'd like to get maybe another pomegranate or something. We're starting to get a decent looking biome area here. As long as I can keep everyone eating and happy. How's the stag beetle population doing? Looks pretty good. How about our ants? Ants are doing fine. Look like they're feeding these pangolins pretty darn good there's another set over here oh their hunger is at 55 what's wrong with you guys you guys have tons of ants and all kinds of stuff in your area should have plenty to eat you, you just don't want to work for your food or something come on man yeah let's put down another pomegranate tree right over here no trees kind of in this area I want to do that there we are excellent Health is looking pretty darn good. I would like to get our gameplay options. How do, where do I want to put this? Do I want to keep this on medium or do I want to put it on hard? Let's keep it on medium for right now. We'll see how that does for us. And since we have a little bit more energy left, we've got to use it. Another stock of bamboo, right? Oh, look at that. It's creating like a, a little sweeping area right around this what is this again pomegranate yes a pomegranate tree and while we're at it more fairy grasses there we are and we'll actually be able to get one more chunk of fairy grass down excellent the biome's looking pretty strong much stronger than it was but we still have a lot of area to cover guys i hope you'll join me for the next episode of Tito ecology until then stay foxy and much love <laughs>